Astronauts report a field for T minus five seconds. Four, three, two, one. The world is entering a new space age. Getting to orbit has never been easier. And this access to space is opening a whole new frontier for innovation. This is what we'll be building and sending to the space station. We're going from hundreds of satellites launched a year to tens of thousands launched a year. Space 3.0, which is where we're going to be building things in space for use in space, but also valuable things to bring back to Earth. Pioneers here in the UK are engineering technologies that unlock exciting new possibilities for the space environment, some of which could radically change life on Earth. As soon as that next phase in space is taken, what that could do for Earth infrastructure across so many different sectors, it's, it's incredible. What is clear is that the UK is absolutely booming on space, right across the value chain, and it's only going to get more exciting. As the largest UK space company, Airbus has the facilities and expertise to support these businesses. So we've invited 10 space startups to join a three-month accelerator program that will help these entrepreneurs take their technology to the stars. So if you even ask someone, hey, can you name like a, a UK-based space company? They, it's very, very difficult for them to do. Yeah, a lot of people think we don't do anything here in the UK. They think it's all yeah. based in the US, right? Yeah. yeah. But I think it's amazing how many space companies there are. We've got 10 different companies on site, and that's people that are innovating in propulsion, people who are trying to make drugs up in orbit, um, people who are trying to innovate education. Morning. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Day two. Week 71, uh, we've got quite a busy day today. There's lots of things going on. Um, we have an MP visit. We've got a lot of different meetings going on with external partners, etc. Katie from BioOrbit, a company that are trying to revolutionize the pharmaceutical industry by manufacturing cancer drugs in space. What we are building is a pharmaceuticals factory in space, in microgravity. Why? Why do this? This is all about the superior crystallization process that happens in microgravity over what happens on Earth. When a, when a crystal grows, you get all these imperfections. So they're caused by gravity. So if you do exactly the same process in space, you don't get these imperfections anymore at the moment. You have to stay in hospital potentially all day getting the treatments. If you have a drug that contains these crystals, you can have a simple, like an EpiPen, where you can inject yourself at home. And this will become our innovation space. And that's going to be you, is it? Yeah, so we've been, we've been based here for the last few weeks. Airbus have been phenomenal at giving us support, particularly at this stage. Wow. Nice, to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Thank you. The beginning of the accelerator, no hires, and now it's like... <laughs> so it's a lot, a lot has happened, that's for sure. And then there's Ashley as well from Applied Atomics. Um, Applied Atomics are, are looking to change the way in-orbit propulsion works. The whole goal is to transfer from the normal labs that we've been prototyping into like this here. So tell me what's unique about your propulsion system. In space we've got two types of systems really uh, when it comes to propelling things around. You've got chemical, um, they're you know, really, really high thrust, powerful, but they're very inefficient, so you use up all your fuel really quickly and it's very expensive. Then you have electric propulsion. So that uses electricity to accelerate your propellant. Really, really efficient, barely uses any fuel, but it's really slow to do certain things. Now our approach is a hybrid approach, so we're able to combine both chemical and electric all in one, and we use water as a fuel to do it. So we can switch back and forth and it achieves all of these new cost and new mobility paradigms. There's also MagDrive, another startup designing new propulsion systems, and they're actually a little further ahead than the other companies on the accelerator program. Yeah, so I have the thruster in the integration bay. Okay, let's have a look. I've been hearing a lot about propulsion systems. Describe this to me, like what, what are we looking at? 
This is a fully integrated system. So everything is in this, propellant, power processing, the thrust ahead itself, and control. When you say propellant, that's like the fuel? Exactly. Okay. Yes. So what does the fuel look like in there? So the propellant is a solid, we use solid metals, we use copper at the moment, but we can actually run with a wide variety of metals. So we've done experiments with aluminium and iron, and crucially, unlike other propulsion systems, our propellant metals are ubiquitous throughout space. Metals are found in lunar regolith, asteroids, even recycled space debris. So in the future, we want to be able to harvest those materials in situ, process them, and then use them as propellant to keep going further. At the end of the day, we, we fundamentally believe that if humanity will be a space-faring civilization, we can't have Earth be the only gas station. The qualities that we're looking for in the companies we want to work for are people with incredible vision and a sense of mission. They really know what they want to get after and they just need help to figure out how to unlock um, that, that end state that they're building towards. That's what's so exciting about the Accelerator program is we're actually getting to meet those people, helping them make the connections, um, giving them business case, uh, helping them in some cases to actually build the technologies that they need. Morning Jeff, uh, we're just going to start in room four with them and introduce the day. We've done six, seven weeks of a lot of Airbus on transmit, a lot of Airbus expert sessions. This morning um, is about not necessarily the sales pitch, but exploring the use cases of your technology now that you better understand space. A growth area in the sector is spacecraft operation. They want to do more spacecraft operations from the UK, UK spacecraft. So we need to have more people becoming trained spacecraft operators. So this would be the, the front door for that. There's a game you brought in today. We already exhibit uh, in many museum and also uh, school activities. So we also use this tool as a tool to engage young people into STEM learning. So uh, this is a space simulator with different kinds of modules and missions inside. For example, this is a ISS docking mission. We, we have a, a cap capturing device to capture the uh, uh, waste uh, satellite in the orbit and then bring it down to the Earth. You want to try it? I'd love to try. That's right. Am I going too fast? No, it seems to be getting further away from Oh my goodness. And you were already sharing this with students. Yeah. So yeah. what sort of response have you had? This raised their awareness and their interest in space. So want to speed up? Oh, need to turn the engine on. Oh, grab. you reckon I can grab yeah, it now? Grab, grab. Oh, look yeah. at that. They're enthusiastic, they're ambitious, they have got a dream and they you know, want to achieve that aim. It, I think it's really exciting that Airbus can help them on that path, actually. We've made a, a hell of a lot of progress in the last five weeks. I'm actually quite astonished. It's been really tough. I, but similarly, I wouldn't change it for the world being a founder and working in a startup is that you become so linked with what's happening in the company, it's very hard to get that separation. Every time you walk in, it's just, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's amazing. So we're literally walking and doing the whole space walk, yeah, oh, yeah, just based exactly. on the sand. Is it your ambition for your technology to help take rockets beyond Earth to the moon, to Mars? Absolutely. One of the best things about this hybrid approach is all of the new trajectories that you unlock on orbit. And a lot of these trajectories are really, really low energy. So you don't have to expend much energy, but you can still get places really fast. So our ambition is to absolutely democratize GEO and beyond. Um, we're first going to market, of course, for the lower Earth orbit space, and as the market for that higher orbit increases, that's where we actually have a space to really, really dominate. Um, like I said, we want to democratize GEO and beyond. That's our, our overall goal. How do I go forward? Uh, fo forward is just forward on the left stick. Um. Hi. Hello. How are we doing? <laughs> In our case, the payoffs are just huge uh, in terms of the impact that it can have on human life. Um, so for us, it would change how cancer treatments are given to patients, and that would have a huge effect on the NHS, and people wouldn't need to go to hospital anymore and can stay at home. Finally works. I don't know.
using space to make these drugs, you can completely change life on Earth. It's about the future of humanity. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. That is so great. That's that was really good. That was really, that was so nice. This is generally like Disneyland. Like, this is just amazing. You know, we are building spacecraft here and we have unique capabilities that aren't found anywhere else in the world. Certain satellite projects, this is the best place to be building those spacecraft. We have the ability to share our knowledge with the younger generation, the smaller businesses that are coming up, that are innovating, creating new technologies, in some cases that will radically change the world and people's lives here on Earth. One of the key things we were looking to get out of the Airbus Accelerator was identifying how we can take the technology we've developed now and get that to the point where primes like Airbus and, and others are interested in flying that. How do we go from making one-off prototypes to making dozens and eventually hundreds per year? So it's really, really rare that you'll be able to be trusted by a space prime to actually be privy to those requirements, to those challenges. So um, we really, really are benefiting from that. Airbus has been phenomenal at uh, giving us such support and a leg up into making um, BioOrbit a reality. You've gone through quite a lot in 14 weeks, four sprints, three weeks, you know, everything from kind of getting it stuck in with your mentors through to building collaborations among yourselves. In partnership with SMEs, we can really help them, well, accelerate their, their businesses. Yeah. It's in everyone's interest that we've got a really vibrant space ecosystem in the UK. Yeah, we're raising two million at the moment and that will cover our first at the moment we are, I think we just had three new starters today which takes us up to 75 people in Cardiff and we're currently building our next satellite, the 4Star 1, which should be launching soon. So hi, my name is Katie, I'm co-founder and CEO of BioOrbit and we are building a pharmaceuticals factory in microgravity. Tomorrow I have um, an investor meeting breakfast, I have quite a few meetings in London and then an investor meeting dinner on until about 10. You're in a country that already attracts more investment into the UK space sector than any other country bar the US. Trying to get the word out there just how exciting this sector is. This big uh, area we're building at the moment is primarily our manufacturing site to take us through potentially up to 100 units per year and begin work on actually those larger systems, that super mag driver. We had a breakthrough and we filed a patent uh, which is really, really exciting. The endorsement and support from the European Space Agency, it's, it's, it's incredible and it puts us at that European stage. The payload that we've designed will be flying to the International Space Station in February next year. That's our experiment that we have designed from the beginning. And watching that getting launched into space is just going to be an insane experience.